Hello everybody, I hope you're all keeping well. Today I'm going to play. I saw something that I've never done before that I would like to give a try. And it's, they, they come under the name of different things. They can be called a spirit doll. They can be called a friendship doll. They can be called a dotty doll. They can be called a soul support doll. Um, regardless of what you want to call them, they're a little doll and you normally gift them to somebody and it helps them in some way and give them to people for various reasons, for good health, if they were pregnant, to wish them well in their pregnancy. It's just a general pick-me-up kind of doll and I thought that might be fun to make. Um, so I'm going to give it a go. And they're not hard by the look of it. I haven't actually done one. Um, but when I was doing a bit of tidy up in here, I found something that I got years and years and years ago that I had pretty much forgotten about. Um, many years ago, I watched a video by Roseanne, who is Roxy Fiber Art on YouTube, and she received a gift from a lady, and I think she called it a friendship doll in that video. I can't remember what she called it because I can't find the video because it's not, you know, the name of it is something totally different. It could have been like a um, happy mail thing. And she received one of these dolls and I absolutely loved it. So I contacted the lady who'd sent it, it who'd sent it to Roseanne at that time and asked her where she'd got these stamps from because she'd used these face stamps on this doll. And so she told me and I ordered them. And they're by a name a lady by the name of Barb Owen. Um and I just came across it. Look, it looks like the cat's had a bit of a chew of it. And they're called Fun Faces by Barb Owen. And she has a website called howtogetcreative.com. And these are the four funny faces um, that are stamps that you can get. But you don't need stamps. You can actually just draw them if you're good at drawing them. But I thought I might use one of these because I've had them this this long and this is going back years and years and years could be 10 years for all I know um, and I haven't used them and she sent me a few fun fibers as well because it was very colorful the one that Roseanne um, received like I said it's a pick-me-up type thing um, although they don't have to be that colorful um, so I thought I might give this a go and that way I can use some of my colourful things that I've received from Baby Craft. I've got all these wonderful beads here. Look at all that that I can use. I've got all the butterflies here that I can use. Plus, I could even use these two little charms here as earrings on this little doll. Um, so I thought we'd try it. I think I need to cut these apart. So I have my little faces all cut out there, put those to one side, um, now it gives no instructions as to the size of the doll but you know it's completely up to you. The other day when I was covering my box, put those together, um, okay so I had this piece of cardstock left. So maybe I can use that as a guide. And that is, <laughs> that's six and three quarter inches. But what I was thinking, so you want your face kind of, and you've got to remember a seam allowance as well. And bring that down just a little bit and think oh okay okay so we want it there like that so that's going to stop there and there okay 
So I'm going to just fold this in half like that. Um, that's going like that. Uh, now I need to find a shape. Now you could just make it an oval if you want to. Um, who was it? Sonia. Sonia stepped out a couple of years ago now. I think she made the Dotty dolls um, and she just did them like that kind of shape. It's up to you what kind of shape you want. I kind of wanted it a little bit different. So like I'm, I'm kind of taking inspiration from the ones Barb Owen did and she, she did some soul support dolls but I'm not going that far because they were kind of a quirky kind of um, shape and I don't want them that quirky so I'm thinking maybe like just keep that there like that Maybe it should have been a bit bigger. Although I could have that up a little bit high. I need some room for the hair and everything though, don't I? Excuse me, miss. Go on. She feels like feathers. She's so soft. Okay, so let's have a think. I've got to come in a bit more than that. So maybe there. I want it to go out in out and in so this is the first draft okay so first draft I kind of wanted it a little bit longer. So, okay, this is the other piece. So what I could do is just put that there. Let's get a bit of, um, actually let me fold it in half first, as best I can. There we go. Got our lines. So, like that. I kind of wanted it to perhaps come more like that. Because it will end up smaller, like once. Once it's done, let's have a look at that.
Okay, that's more to my liking. Uh, I can put that up. Just a little bit. And a scant um, seam allowance. What's that? That's probably not even a quarter of an inch, is it? No, it's like an eighth of an inch seam allowance around it all. And so Or add your seam allowance on, perhaps. I have to make one and then make any adjustments to it um, for the second one because the first one is always like a prototype. You're not quite sure how it's going to turn out. See, like even now, those two sides aren't quite the same, but that's okay because I can just cut it down the middle, keep the side that I like, and then fold, you know, um, make another pattern. It's just that that will come in and once it comes in it ends up thinner and I didn't, well I don't want it too big do I? Maybe the head's too big but you add a lot of decoration to the head you know that's like the part and then you have a little tail coming down here so let's stick with that put my little face over here out of the way um, I prefer this side of it. Um, although there's not a lot of difference and we never sew the same on both sides anyway so maybe if I hold it that way. So we need to cut two of these. That would be your grain of your fabric, like that. So cut two of those. Okay, you're back. Come on. Let me go find some fabric. All right, so I found this bit of fabric. And probably found it thrifting. It's just got a floral piece on it. A little bit of a paisley in the background. Um, but I'm thinking, what about having all the flowers down the bottom like that? And then the head part could be more plain because that will be decorated anyway. That could look nice, couldn't it? And then on the back, you could I could do the same thing, perhaps like there. Because um, it, it doesn't matter what's on the head. Like I could put it there as well. Oh, I think I will. Okay, so we're not going to have to worry too much about the grain of the fabric because that would be the grain going that way but I want to kind of do it that way Ooh, let me think okay I can do it that way I can do it that way mm -hmm. I prefer it that way okay well we're just going to do it this way and see how we go and so I'm just going to trace around it. 
Well, that's noisy, isn't it? Somebody working on something. Okay, so that's one, which will be pretty. And So I'll just take that part there. Maybe I'll just fold it over. Okay, that's what I will do. Fold it over there and cut. <laughs> you, she's bought her little toy. Look at this, her little pipe cleaner. Is this shells? Did you bring that? Good girl her little pipe cleaner that she likes to play with. Oh, just put a couple of pins in it. These are not my fabric scissors, but they're such good scissors, they cut so well anyway. Did that make it? Yes, it did. Are you back? You've brought it back, aren't you clever? Yeah? Good girl. Okay, so that and that, and that will have, so I could use that as the front being, because it's got the pretty pink flower on the front, and that one could, yeah, I think I kind of like, they're both lovely actually, they're both really pretty, but we might have the pink one on the front, and it doesn't matter about that. Okay, wow, getting there, getting there. So, this one will be the front. It might, it might show through the face. We have to be careful of that. Unless I double up on the fabric for the face. Do you see what I mean? It's going to show through the face and I didn't really want that. Maybe I can then... Hmm. Are you back? You don't have it with you. Um, <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> All right, so I just cut a little bit of this, that floral fabric out. I'm going to flip it over and use that as just a little backing on the face so that when I put it on here, that doesn't, oh my goodness. That doesn't, the greenery doesn't, <laughs> doesn't shine through. Oh my goodness, this is Fifi. Just in case you didn't see the video where I introduced her, Fifi is a little rescue kitten that my husband brought home for me. And she's so lovely. She feels like feathers. She's the sweetest little girl, but she's a kitten and kittens like to explore. <laughs> I've had to cover my pincushion up because she was nibbling on the pearls on it and I thought that can't be good. So we've got to keep our eye on her. But of course she wants to be near me now, doesn't she? That's, you know, not a huge amount of um, 
crafting gets done at the moment because of this, but I don't mind. So I think I will just put that there. Like <laughs> it's got a fade up on me. Um like that. And I can't have my, my door closed all the time because it's getting to the warmer weather. Plus she wants to see where I am. Let's move those. Move that. Did you say hello? She has one blue and one golden eye. And she's just lovely. And she's five months old. And her ears are pink. And she's just such a sweet little girl. She does have a little smudge on her head and that's okay because not everything's perfect. She's just perfectly imperfect. <laughs> and she's very, um, what's the word? Timid. Very timid. To, she's, she's much better with me now. She was very scared when she came home because she'd already been adopted once and They'd returned her, which I, you know, that's sad, isn't it? So I thought, well, no matter what happens, we're not returning her because we can't have that happening again, can we? Okay, I'll have to come back to this because obviously I'm not going to get anything done. Okay, she's asleep. <laughs> so I've just um, temporarily put a little bit of glue behind it to hold it to the fabric while I just do a running stitch all the way around the inside of the face. I'm just using this crochet cotton. And it's just a simple running stitch, just in and out. To hold it in place. And this one's quite big. I had a while while she was settling down and going to sleep. I had a little look on Pinterest um, at this sort of thing, and you can make them as small as you like or as big as you like. Now this one, this one's my first one, so it's my sample gives me an idea of how I would like to go about making some because I would like to make some I think they'd be great for incorporating slow stitching on um, a lovely way to you know send a little gift to someone just to say you're thinking of them and you hope they're well lift their spirits a little bit uh, that's why they have so many different names, I think, because they're used for so many different reasons. I like the term friendship doll, but I also like soul support, you know, to just, I don't know, I just think it's nice to support somebody if they're going through a rough patch or something like that. on like that and then you put the two right sides together like that but if you're wanting to have a hanger you would probably put that in there now what will I use as a hanger um I don't know if that will be, yep, that'd be fine. Okay, tiny little bit of ribbon there that I can place. It's only little, isn't it? It's 
my sample one. I can't I can't be worrying too much about it. Okay, let's see, do I have any you can either clip or pin your piece together. There's another one there, okay. And decide where you want to start and like you need to leave a gap so that you can stuff it okay so and if you wanted tassels on it instead of like beading and things like that at the bottom here you would insert them at the bottom here the same way I just put that little hanger there um, Yeah, uh, but I kind of want to do mine a bit different, I think. But I may change my mind. So what I might do is leave my gap for stuffing down here. And then I'm just going to, in a, a small stitch, because it's going to be stuffed, I'm just going to run a stitch line all the way around like I showed you on here back stitching when I start back stitching when I finish just so that I actually might come in more narrow here I'm just thinking about it I might just um, make that a little bit more narrow like that down the bottom so I'll show you what I've done okay so that's done I've done the seam I've left my gap there and now we're going to turn it the other way through and I don't think I'll be clipping any of the curves because it's only a small um, little project we'll see how we go oh, they start as soon as I start so there's our little hanger at the top there and you could always add one at the end if you wanted to as well so, there we go I have to find some stuffing won't I and that's basically how big it will be now I think most people make them a bit smaller than this but I don't suppose it really matters what size they are. Or shape, any shape you like. Okay. Okay, I have to go find some stuffing. Okay, so I have, let me just put that under there. <laughs> Can't have the cat eating pins and things, can I? Okay, so I have some stuffing. I've got more over there. Just pop it in. And I don't think they need to be stuffed quite as tight as a doll would be um, I don't know we'll see what the shape looks like when I start sh stuffing it because you don't really know until see I could have made the head a lot bigger um, for the face by the look of it so this might not even turn out any good shall see <laughs> all right
right, so she is stuffed. A little bit wonky in places, but, you know, um, that can be disguised. I've just closed up that side seam there by just folding the fabric over as best I could. And now I'm just going to hide that knot inside there and close the gap up. She's not perfect. Oh, I might be able to show you on this one. So there, if you can see that where the thread is coming out this side, I go over to the other side, out like that and back over to this side. And that's how I'm going to close it up. So I'll do that because it's much easier to do that if I've got it where I can see it. But where I can see it, like where it is now, you can't really see what I'm doing. So I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and close it up. Anyway, the head's a little bit skew with, but it's got to have hair and things like that on. And, yeah. So, so far, that's what she looks like. Observations, the face I should have cut a little bit smaller. I'll see if I can kind of disguise that a little bit. We'll see. I could do like a little chin mark or something. We'll see. I need to find something for hair and decorating. I could 